when Marvel Comics essentially rebooted almost their entire X-Men line and they announced all the new series that were coming out, there were a few things that you know caught my attention, Immortal X-Men and whatnot, but there was one series I was the most excited about, Legion of X, which is the follow-on to Way of X from Size Barrier. This time we got Yad Bazuldia in on art instead of Bob Quinn. And here talking to me about that is my good friend, Doc. How you doing, Doc? I am well, sir. I am glad to be here. And uh, let's talk some, well, X-Men, I guess. So, Last week, we got seven new X-Men comics. This week, we got one. That makes sense, right? Yeah, well, two weeks ago, we got one as well. So one, <laughs> seven, one in three yeah. weeks. Get your fucking shit together, Marvel. Yeah, if you're only going to deliver one X-Men comic in a week, make it a good one. I don't even know what this Legion of X number one is, Doc. What no, is well, the point of this comic book? You know, when I read Way of X, I'm like, oh, wow, Cy Spurrier might have turned a little bit of a corner here. But no, this is the Cy Spurrier I know and fucking can't stand. Warren Ellis, uh, Grant Morrison wannabe, thinks he's a lot smarter and deeper and he uh, confuses pretentiousness for depth. This is the Cy Spurrier I know and can't fucking stand. That is a very good way to describe this, Doc, because there, it seems pretty much aimless. It's part police procedural. It's part weird uh, stuff happening on Mars with this uh, giant eye character. And then it's also, it's got Legion in his own world that he's created for blindfolded himself. And none of it really comes together well. There's so many things introduced in here, but none of them stand out for any good reasons. And the, the characterization was really off. We've got Nightcrawler dropping F-bombs, using words and verbiage that I've never heard him, him use before. We saw he and Storm got together, and she threatened to shoot a lightning bolt up his ass, which I've never heard her say in her life, you know, and called him Indigo Boy. This is um, Cy Spurrier not giving any fuck about characterization, the same way he has never given any fucks about characterization. He almost did during Way of X. Nothing here really like we got to that stuff with Mars. Yeah, first you have Storm threatening to shoot a lightning bolt up his ass. I, I get that she was like kind of joking with him and he was he, Nightcrawler was being a little bit of a jackass to like kind of tease Storm. But then you get into all this Iraqi nonsense. D seriously, does anyone here? Does any X-Men fan anywhere give any fucks about any of these characters? Does anyone? Do you? No, not particularly. And we get introduced to this new one that's essentially a giant eyeball that apparently killed some gods. Yeah, and apparently it just it's an eyeball that if it looks at you, it swallows you. You know what these are? These are inhumans. These aren't mutants. They're inhumans. Mutants were at least relatively close to, to humans, except for a few handful. These are just weird fucking abominations. Side Sprayer wishing that he was Grant Morrison, but he's not that clever or interesting. So you get this stupid character. And I guess the big thing about the Nightcrawler story about going to Mars and meeting this character that wants to bone him Apparently, one of these Iraqi gods, even though the Iraqis don't believe in gods, or they do believe in gods, but none of them have been good enough for them, the god of mischief, or whatever it is, has escaped and presumably is on Krakoa. The, apparently, there's another Loki. Escaped from whatever weird thing that they do where they summon deities, and but that one ran away or something. They think it's on Iraq or on Krakoa. What, what, I don't understand why I need to care about this yet. Like, they haven't established a reason for me to care. I'm with you. I don't care about any of this stuff. And, of course, he's really interested in Legion. We knew that from the beginning. And he's got this weird story where Legion has created this alternate universe where blindfold, I guess, and he can sit by this altar and I guess they can live happily ever after. But she doesn't want to be a precog anymore, so she refuses to have like a physical form, she's still uh, like in the astral plate or something, and he doesn't get why, but apparently she saw Nimrod murder Warlock's dad? I, I don't understand where this is going. This is just him throwing random shit together. There, there's no connection here. Okay, fine, blindfold if she's has a body, then she can't control the neural impulses that blah 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 i don't give a fuck now she can't see the future she could just randomly see shit across 
the universe. Maybe that's what he was getting at. I I just got a whole load of don't give a fuck. I don't really anything going on here. There's so many stupid like just things that are thrown in here. You've got the the one team that worked for Nightcrawler because he's the sheriff. If you didn't know that Nightcrawler is the sheriff of Krakoa, and he's got his own police squad. And you've got Juggernaut. And his partner is Forget Me Not. And this is the joke, Doc. And it's hilarious because you get the joke and the punchline at least five times. Juggernaut can't remember that Forget Me Not is his partner because he keeps forgetting. This is that character that Matthew Rosenberg introduced back in that worst X Man ever miniseries he did, like, I don't know, five, six years ago. A mutant that apparently has been on the team since the beginning, and his power is nobody remembers him. Yuck, yuck, yuck. It was hilarious because he was interrogating this guy that turns into a smoke monster who apparently, while he was on Earth, murdered his wife and his flee to Krakoa to fight extradition, you know, because the amnesty agreement. And the smoke guy is apparently he's been confessing the things that have happened, but he doesn't remember either. It was hilarious. Hey, guess what? Everybody forgets him. Hey, guess what? Everybody forgets him. Dude, come on. Do it a little different. Or how about let's not make a character who would be the dumbest, like, uh, sidekick partner in police history a police officer. Let's make actual logical choices with the mutants on the island. There's only a few million of them. Why not use literally anyone else? Okay, I can kind of get the logic of a guy won't be defensive if he keeps forgetting that he's being interrogated because he keeps forgetting the interrogator. He'd make a great interrogator, but he'd make a terrible police partner. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you don't make him a partner. And and how the fuck does Fabian Cortez, Legion, and Nightcrawler keep remembering him? Dude, it doesn't matter. This whole book is just really strange. It feels like it's size barrier, picking out the characters that no one likes, but he finds rather interesting, and then shoehorning them into this fucking comic book that they, they let him write. This stupid character, uh, the big tall character that was black, now it's got red. They got Lost. red hair now lost no one cares about this character they're pretty much useless but lost has got to be a big part of this and gives this just amazing speech it's so amazing at at different parts in the story after it's given other characters are still in awe of the amazing speech that lost gives to talk this young man that apparently is the skin jacker into the police headquarters so they can figure out who's going around murdering people and flaying their flesh i believe I swear to God, every comic book these days needs to have some mutual admiration. You're the best ever speechifying in the middle of it that ever by some character nobody gives a fuck about that validates everyone else. You know, look, it, it's it's Cy Spurrier taking random characters. I mean, maybe he's doing it because nobody gives a shit about them and he can break them and nobody gives a, nobody will care. Uh, but Lost has literally zero personality. We, she's been in what, like seven or eight comics now after you know, Way of X, that onslaught revelation, and now this issue. I literally have no idea what their personality is. I don't even know what the purpose of the character is. If you're watching this and you're going, you know, it feels like Wes and Doc have gotten to this point. Maybe they're about to wrap it up. And I don't know what the comic book was about. You were in the same boat as I did, even though I read the goddamn thing. I still don't know what Legion of X is supposed to be. Is it a police procedural? Is it a a look into Iraqi culture? Is it supposed to be about Legion finding a place or blindfold? Who really cares? This is a really terrible discussion between him and Xavier. And I don't know. I I will not be reading this anymore. It's just awful. Unless it's for worst of the week or something like that. Because this is just an enormous turnoff. I was really excited for Legion of X. It was the one comic book I thought would be good because Way of X was was uh, was really good. The quality was really there. But he's just lost it here, and he's just going for stupid jokes. And there's nothing interesting in this comic book whatsoever. No, there really isn't. The Nimrod with the Magus somewhere across the galaxy thing was marginally interesting, but... That's absolutely going to get explored in a different comic. There's no way they're going to explore that in this. Maybe X-Men Red, maybe just regular X-Men. Everything else here was meandering nonsensical bullshit with 
new characters that nobody gives a shit about from this at this point i've decided that jonathan hickman adding a rocco was the worst addition to i mean it's right up there with resurrection as the worst addition to x-men mythos ever because it just it's an excuse for weird writers to create add weird characters that nobody cares about as just some random deus ex machina or you know macguffin in a book just to move the plot a- 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 ahead and i yeah, hope they all even, die not even really all that effective with that so this is a major league disappointment i'm certainly not recommending this i don't think anybody should be reading this this thing was awful this was like tinny howard leah williams levels of garbage i was just really shocked by the by the quality that wasn't there with this cowboy book and uh, i don't know i guess this is the size sprayer that we thought m- we may be getting in way of x but he finally arrived i wish i could tell you that things were going to get better with x-men but by all accounts it appears that things are going to get worse we're getting the sequel to hellfire gal that no one asked for at least it's not an entire event it's just like one giant size issue but it's still bullshit you'll get all the variant covers it's not going to get better anytime soon with x-men it's just uh, feels like a lost cause right now. 